Hey guys, it's Ed Bird and I'm back. Today I'm going to be looking at those shoes that you can utilise for tempo runs and interval workouts. I got three shoes I'm going to pair up against each other. You could call it an up-tempo shootout. Do you get it? Yep, it's a terrible dad joke, but I am a dad, so it's perfectly acceptable. Those three shoes are going to be the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel, the Nike Zoomfly 3, and the Adidas Takumi Sen 6. Let's get to it. So pulling out some of my faster day shoes for you today, those that seem to have been in the box for a couple of weeks. I think after that half marathon effort, I've been concentrating on kind of building up that core again, uh, slower pace miles, so it's nice to get these shoes out and test them. One of them's got a carbon fiber plate, two of them have got very simple uppers, one's got this vapor weave material, and two of them are exceptionally light. All three of them are suitable for fast pace training and tempo runs, but which is the best? So first a few stats for you, I'll throw them up on the screen up in the corner there. Quite a difference actually between these three shoes. They're all round about the same price point which was kind of what prompted this comparison video in the first place. But I've seen people using them for all sorts of stuff really. For me, they're certainly faster paced shoes and ones are going to utilise those tempo runs and faster paced intervals. So I'm going to look at them from three perspectives. The upper, the midsole, the outsole, and then value. So starting off with the upper, let's look at the Zoomfly 3 first. I really struggled with the fit of the Zoomfly 3 when I first got it back in July of 2019. Some days it felt fine, it felt good in fact, and then other days not so much. I think the strange fit and the feel over the top of the foot here is a little bit down to the weighty midsole. I think because it's got that plate within it, where the shoe flexes, it just felt really odd to me over the top of the forefoot. Where the vapor weave material feels really light over the top of the foot, in the next percent, it just doesn't feel like that on the Zoomfly 3 to me. The upper's just sort of overly roomy to me, it just sort of bunches up around the top of the foot. I felt I had to sort of cinch the laces really, really tight to get any sort of lockdown. That never really left me feeling confident about using the shoe over a number of miles. The upper on the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebels, more of a sort of fly knit type material. It's very snug, almost the exact opposite really of the Zoom Fly 3. New Balance shoes seem to be a little more snug, a little shorter in terms of their sizing. I did have a look on their sizing guide on their website and they do seem to come in that little bit smaller, they're a little bit shorter. I've certainly enjoyed other New Balance shoes going half a size up to an 11 and a half. Again, I struggled a little bit when I first got this shoe and ended up removing the insole, which I found to just be really slippery kind of on the top. It just seemed like it wasn't really doing an awful lot for me. I just preferred none at all actually in there. It just felt great to me with no insole whatsoever. I also preferred to remove the laces. They were just overly long and very, very elastic feeling. And I'm having a similar issue in the New Balance 1080 V10. I put some shorter ones in there that were much more appropriate for the length. With those, I felt I achieved a much better lock over the top of the midfoot here. And I enjoyed loads of really successful interval sessions after that in the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel. No major concerns about the upper really on this shoe. I really quite enjoyed it. It's very soft internally, although it feels somewhat coarser on the outside of the shoe. Just do watch out for the sizing, make sure you get it spot on um, if you are gonna go for the Rebel. The upper on the Takumi Sen 6 is just so light, it's kind of barely there, it feels wonderful. It's very, very light, this shoe. It is a shoe where you need to loosen off the laces to kind of slide your foot into it. It's not gonna be for those who kind of shoehorn their feet into shoes. This one, you need to loosen them off and then re-tighten, which you should do anyway, really naughty people. I did find with the very simple rounded laces that you need to spend a little bit of time, a little bit of care to get the right lockdown with this shoe. But once it's there, once you've got it, the shoe just disappears. It's a really wonderful shoe. This up is really easy to clean. You can just get like a damp cloth, just sort of wipe off whatever grit and grime has kind of landed on the upper. Certainly, it's light, it's breathable. Only one small issue I found is that with the tongue. Sometimes it does slip down a little way. I think it's a little dependent on the type of sock that I've been using. So just something to bear in mind. So scoring for upper is one point for the Zoomfly 3, two points for the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel, and three points for the Takumi Sen 6. So on to midsole now, we'll kick off with the Fuel Cell Rebel. The Rebel has a real pop and snap. It's kind of one of those shoes that makes you feel like you're going slower than you actually really are. 
It certainly promotes a kind of midfoot, forefoot strike, and it's certainly very, very light and nimble. 220 grams in a UK size 11, that's pretty light. I've always felt it's an enjoyable ride in this one. It feels like kind of one of those very low to the ground, very, very light kind of racing sports cars. Certainly the midsole material on this one really is cushioned. It's kind of similar, I guess, to Boost and a little bit similar to Zoom X. I wouldn't say they're the same, but you do get a similar feeling. There's a real feeling of pop. There's a lot of energy return there. I don't know whether part of that's down to this sort of TPU piece here, possibly. The Zoom Fly 3, on occasion, the midsole felt really great and then other times just like I was wallowing in a load of marshmallow. Sometimes it provided a ride similar to my beloved Zoomfly Flyknit and other times not so much. There's a lot of react in the midsole here and I desperately wanted to like the shoe but it's so much of a tempo shoe that if you try and run anything other than that it just feels like you're running on a mattress. Obviously if you're doing interval sessions you're going to want something that's reasonable in between those faster sessions and it just really doesn't do it for me. I think perhaps the weight difference between the midsole and the upper will just put a lot of people off here. This is quite a heavy shoe really, certainly for one that's supposed to be used for racing. I mean, it does say racing on top of the insole. 310 grams is surely gonna put off some prospective buyers from getting this shoe. The midsole in here is quite intriguing really. There's lots of things going on there. There's some boost, there's this light strike material. It really is quite different to anything else I've run in. It really does feel propulsive. I kind of felt as if it kind of augments your foot rather than it being a shoe really. It's kind of really promoting that you land on that forefoot area. It kind of forces you to do it. It wills you to do it. Good. I mean, it's feather light, even in a size 11 and a half UK. It's still like 220 grams. As I say, it really does feel propulsive. I found no problem getting up to speeds of about 6 minutes 10 per mile on those intervals recently. And then on those recoveries at around about 8 minutes 30 and slower, it still felt fine. It really did enable me to push the cadence up to levels that I would normally do in a race, even faster than a race, around about 180 steps per minute. Legs and the turnover of those legs just felt great on those intervals really did feel wonderful. It's kind of springy, but you still feel you've got good kind of response from the terrain underneath your foot. So for midsole, I've got to give the three points again to the Takumi Sen 6, two points to the Fuel Cell Rebel, and one to the poor old Zoom Fly. One area that I did struggle a little bit with the Fuel Cell Rebel was that of the outsole. I found it picks up debris and bits and pieces in these kind of little holes on the outsole really easily. And I did find it a little slippery on certain wet paths. If you're on some smooth kind of rocks, anything like that, you're going to slip around. It is showing some signs of wear after about 80 miles here in the forefoot area. In fact, there's a massive stone stuck here. I've just noticed here. It's wedged into the into the midsole. Yeah, it's a massive rock just stuck in the outsole. Been running on that for ages. The Zoom Fly 3 is functional enough, certainly in the outsole. This rubber section isn't anything like the one that's on the next percent. If anyone tells you it is don't listen to them. It's completely different. The rubber on the next percent's far more grippy. This just feels kind of, I don't know. It's definitely made a different stuff. Traction was reasonable in this. I mean, it's hard wearing enough. I used it a fair amount, got up to over 100 miles in it. And there's very little degradation here on the outsole. I think perhaps that rubber section here is a bit thicker. It's definitely a different material though. The Takumi Sen 6 got a very involved outsole. There's all sorts of stuff going on here. You've got their typical Adidas torsion system here and then these kind of rubber sort of nubs at the back in the heel and in the forefoot area. Obviously this one's still in testing, still using it a fair amount on my faster days, so it remains to be seen just how durable these nubs are gonna be. But certainly in terms of traction, a real winner. So in terms of scores on the outsole, three for the Takumi Sen 6, two for the Zoom Fly 3, and one for the Fuel Cell Rebel. That's its Achilles heel, really. So on to value now. Now these shoes occupy a similar price point, as I mentioned earlier. And I think it's really important at this point to consider kind of longevity and durability of the shoe, as well as versatility. In terms of performance, for the money, it's the Takumi Sen 6 all the way. But wait! I found the Fuel Cell Rebel on sale for as little as £75 over here in the UK, which is a total steal for this shoe. It's versatile, it's fast, certainly low on weight, 
for all those features for that price you can't go wrong so in terms of value this time around i'm going to give three points to the new balance fuel cell rebel the takumi sen two points and the zoomfly 3 one point so tossing up the scores i've got five for the nike zoomfly 3 eight for the new balance fuel cell rebel and the winner is the adidas takumi sen 6 with 11 points certainly that's my winner at the moment for tempo and interval days that shoe really is fantastic. It's bringing out the best of me as well. I find it quite liberating having less foam under the foot and it's certainly enabling me to reach speeds that I didn't think I could reach. Hope you've enjoyed today's shootout video guys. Please remember to click the subscribe button and hit that bell for notifications. Please give the video a thumbs up like and share it with your friends. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.